So here's an absolute mind blower of a story. This is a tweet from Saudi Arabia. This is the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, their Twitter account. It says, As the Arabic saying goes, He who interferes with what doesn't concern him finds what doesn't please him. Hashtag Saudi Arabia. Hashtag Canada. Sticking one's nose where it doesn't belong. And you see there's a plane there that's flying at a building. Interesting. Now, they, they deleted that tweet. They deleted it. What are they saying there? Let me explain to you exactly what they're saying. Canada recently, um, they called out Saudi Arabia and they said, hey, listen, what you're doing to these women's rights activists is unacceptable. So what Saudi Arabia is doing is, even though they gave women the right to drive recently, all the women who were leading the women's rights charge to get that change, they went and they rounded them up and they threw them in prison and some of them might get the death penalty. So why did they do that? Well, you can't, you're not supposed to question the absolute authority of the theocratic authoritarians who are in control. So you're not allowed to protest. You thought, oh, protesting? Even if we give you what you want, which is women being able to drive, we're still going to say you're not allowed to do what you did, which is protest to try to get that done. So we'll, we'll give the right to drive, but we're going to round up all the women who were pushing for this most aggressively. By the way, absolute heroes, and they're the bravest people in the world to stand up in a place like Saudi Arabia and, and make this push. I mean, they really are... Think of the history books here. I mean, they're going to... Wow. These women are just absolute heroes. But they lock them up, so Canada goes, okay, well, here's a fucking slam dunk human rights issue that is a no-brainer. And so some Canadian government Twitter account said we call on for the release of these women's rights activists and all that. Saudi Arabia's response was to sever diplomatic ties with Canada, kick out, um, you know, the Canadian ambassadors from Saudi Arabia, say no more future uh, trade deals or investments in Canada from Saudi Arabia. Uh, and then this tweet came out. And what they're saying is, hey... Careful how you criticize us. Your nose doesn't belong in our business. And hey, maybe we'll 9 11 the shit out of you because of what you said. You couldn't prove Canada's point any more than you just did. I mean, their whole point was hey, man, you guys are really authoritarian. And this is really irrational what you're doing to these to these uh, women's rights activists, and it's immoral. And then, Ca and then uh, Saudi Arabia responds by being totally irrational, totally authoritarian, and totally immoral. I mean, come on. Come on. This is crazy. Now, imagine for a second, you it was an official state enemy of the United States. So an official state enemy of the United States... Threatens to 9-11, one of our top allies. How quickly would we call for sanctions, sever diplomatic ties, uh, release statements saying this is totally unacceptable, this is a rogue state? How quickly? So quickly. But when it's Saudi Arabia, I'm not kidding about this. The U.S. said, we're staying neutral. Never, ever, 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 ever pretend like you care about human rights and democracy and freedom and civil liberties ever again. Ever again. It's so comically obvious that if it's Saudi Arabia, if it's Israel, if it's anybody who's a top ally of ours, you can get away with anything, even if you threaten our other top allies, like Canada. Are you fucking kidding me? What a joke. And they have the nerve to go out there and pretend like, yes, we need to intervene in Syria for humanitarian reasons because we care about freedom and democracy. You care about freedom and democracy? Why did you put Saudi Arabia on the Human Rights Council at the UN? A, a country that still beheads people for sorcery and witchcraft. They're threatening to 9-11 our neighbor. This is sheer lunacy. So, 
what this shows is, I mean, li listen, we're totally cool with them locking up uh, women's rights activists, and we're totally cool with them threatening to 9-11 our neighbor. Talk about an unholy alliance. Saudi Arabia is the real number one state sponsor of terror. It is, it's true. It's true. Where do you think all of this funding for jihadists in Syria comes from? Al-Qaeda in Yemen. It comes from Saudi Arabia. We give them weapons and money. They turn around and give weapons and money to jihadists all around the world. And th again, this was proven. What happened in Saudi Ar in uh, Syria? Well, the weapons found that ISIS had, they, they stockpiled weapons. They were U.S. weapons. They had U.S. serial numbers. So, either we gave it directly to them or, more likely, we gave it to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia turned around and gave it to them. Now, there's another story that just broke right before I came on air. Guess what? Saudi Arabia, uh, a coalition, by the way, uh, a bombing coalition that the U.S. is part of. We just wiped out a school bus full of children in Yemen. Right before I came on air, this happened. So, Saudi Arabia has been arming ISIS, arming Al-Qaeda, locking up women's rights activists for asking for basic rights, threatening to 9-11 our neighbor, and now they bombed a school bus full of children. Will the U.S. say a single word against this authoritarian, theocratic, rogue state terrorist menace that is Saudi Arabia? No, we won't. So, okay, that's fine, but here's the thing. Just never talk about human rights again. Never talk, oh, I care about them in Saudi Arabia, or that's why we're in Iraq or Afghanistan. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Fuck you. It's a sick joke, man. It's a sick joke. And what happened to President Tough Guy? Saudi Arabia, they were responsible for 9-11. That's what Trump said years ago. Now, he just gave them over a $100 billion weapons deal. We're going to cover a story later. Um, they're giving Trump... They are... They've given Trump $300,000 in the past just to stay at his hotels when they visit the U.S. That was the last time. Now they came again. They increased... Uh, his hotel's been losing money every month. There was a... Now they made money, and there was a giant increase of 13%. Why? Because Saudi officials stayed at one of his hotels. So do you understand what's going on here? This is the Saudi government bribing Donald Trump, bribing officials in Washington to be their buddy and let them get away with anything. So, you know, all, for all the shrieking and screaming about Russia and the lack of evidence on that front, there is a plethora of evidence for Saudi Arabia buying favorable policy from Washington and they're fucking threatening to 9-11 people now and blowing up school buses full of children and we won't say anything because Donald Trump is Saudi's puppet. He's Saudi's bitch. And nobody's going to tell you that in mainstream media. This is a story, this should have been on every mainstream media outlet. That Saudi Arabia just threatened to 9-11 Canada. And no, they're not, none of them are going to talk about it. And you wonder why our show is incredibly popular. You wonder why new media is blowing up. It's because this is an elephant in the room kind of story and they're not touching it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable.